Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Yep, uh, thank you very much for inviting me to the talk. Uh, so I will start. Uh, the talk is a uh, rank of sparse Bernoulli matrices. Uh, so I will start probably with a singularity of a Bernoulli matrices. So, so the first one is like the conjecture on uh, the Renan-Stein matrices. So I think this is one of the most famous conjecture in discrete random matrices. Uh, if V is a n by n uh, square matrix, where the entries are plus minus one uh, with probability one half, then it's conjecture that uh, V is uh, not invertible with probability uh, equal to one half plus zero or one to the power n. So. I'm using the notation of a singular value here. So for a matrix A, I'm listing the singular value from the biggest to the smallest. And here, so it's SMB equal to zero, uh, equal one half plus zero one to the N. And what's the meaning of uh, this term here really is that uh, it's roughly saying that uh, they are exactly that is the probability of uh, either two columns which are identical or two rows are identical. Oh, and the belief behind this is really that uh, the uh, singularity of uh, discrete random matrices depends uh, on uh, linear dependence of few rows or few columns. So this is the idea behind that. And essentially in the, this case is the extreme case is two columns are the same or two rows are the same uh, up to the sign difference. Um, so this is called a weak conjecture and there is a stronger con conjecture is precisely that this term should be one plus zero or one of the probability of having uh, two identical columns or rows. And so this was studied, I think, traced back to 1967 when Comrose uh, showed that the probability actually vanishes as n goes to infinity. And in 1995, uh, Comoros and Serenity show that it actually has an exponential decay. And then there's the work of Tao and Wu, Morgan, Wu and Wood, which improved the constant term in front. And eventually, uh, Tidmirov solved this problem uh, in 2018, verify that the one half is the uh, precise constant here in front of that. And so this is for the random side matrices. Then um, there's also a conjecture for Bernoulli matrices. Yeah, the matrix have an independent entry and the entries are Bernoulli zero one with probability p, and here p can take uh, values from uh, one half uh, to close to zero. When uh, so p can be an independent variable, so it can be very small. And so the conjecture is that uh, a is singular, is precisely equal to one plus zero o one of the probability that either a row or a column of A equals zero. So in this case, the matrix, uh, each column or each row is like, a, it's a zero one vector, right? So there's the chance that uh, one of the column or one of the row equals zero entirely. And so for this conjecture, maybe it's worth remark that when P strictly less than log N over N, then this result is uh, becomes immediate in the sense that this term becomes a high probability event. 
when P is below uh, the stress row log N over N. And this was done by a recent work last year by uh, Livat and Timirov. Uh, they verify uh, this conjecture in the regime where uh, P is between uh, some epsilon constant and uh, to some uh, to the level of log n over n, but uh, with the constraint that c is uh, some large constant, so means uh, this is much below than one half, and this is still have a gap to uh, log n over n. And what they get is uh, actually uh, quantitative results, meaning that it's not the probability of just the invertibility, but also the size of the least singular values. So the least singular value less equal to t is equal to whatever we have here, adding uh, some penalty terms for the term t here. Uh, of course, t here can be greater equal to zero. And so what they have there is uh, some, uh, this is some super polynomial term, but not uh, uh, exponential in N. When, if their T is greater than some absolute constant, actually they can improve this result to some uh, uh, polynomial in N order, the constant in front. And so there are two gap remains from here and from here. But uh, actually, uh, I think also is similar to last year, I think it's also like uh, September, October, uh, Yen, Sha, and Sune settle the case when P is uh, at a constant regime. And I should also mention that uh, the work of Basak Rudosi, uh, which was working on the uh, singularity of sparse random matrices where uh, P is below the threshold log n over n. And the result actually, uh, while not working on boundary matrices, turns out to work on a small neighborhood of uh, log n over n. So the picture looks like this. Here I'm drawing the areas of so we have the work of uh, Ligvat and Tikmirov, and then his work of uh, Yen, and then Basak Rudos's work also work, uh, verify the conjectures in the region in a small neighborhood of uh, log n of n. So there was a small gap uh, left here. And this is actually the main topic of uh, today's talk. And also it's about uh, the rank of uh, discrete random matrices. So it's similar to the first conjecture in the first slide about uh, the singularity of uh, random sign matrices. We also have a rank conjecture on the random side matrices. So it's the same thing, but instead of the least singular value, now it's uh, n minus k, so no, but uh, with a uh, fixed integer k. So k is not like an uh, independence. So k is at the constant levels. But then uh, the singular value s n minus k of b equal to zero, the conjecture is the probability is uh, the same thing, one half plus zero o one rise to the power n, but uh, we have a uh, little k here. So it rise uh, with respect to k. And again, actually, I think it's this month also, Ben, Sha, and Shanae, uh, they actually solved this conjecture uh, in the sense, uh, not only this, but also, uh, the same conjecture for the Bernoulli matrices at P in the constant regime. So 
and besides a uh, rank of uh, Bernoulli matrices or William Sy matrices, there's also some work of uh, Costello and Wu on the symmetric cases. So, for instance, like uh, uh, symmetric sparse when the matrices, for example, the adjacency matrix of uh, uh, a Schrodinger graph. And now we will present the result here. So what we have is, uh, again, for Bernoulli matrices, so A's uh, n by n Bernoulli matrices, with P equal to Pn. And then uh, for any positive integer k, there exists a constant ck greater than 0 such that if my P uh, is lies in this region from log n over n to uh, ck, then for any p equal to zero, we have this same type of uh, estimate is equal to one plus zero or one times, uh, since we're looking at the case, uh, uh, n minus case, uh, so n minus k plus one singular value here. Uh, here is like the probability of existing k rows or k columns, which are just identically zero. And here we add another uh, penalty term according to the size of T. Uh, so this term is roughly uh, n to the 2K when uh, P is uh, say of order log n over n, since this is becomes uh, negligible compared to the polynomial in n. But uh, it gets much worse when uh, when uh, p gets to the constant levels. But as I suspect this is just due to uh, the, the work is not optimizing on that region. And maybe I should remark that uh, CK is uh, much smaller than one half and the dependence on uh, K is not very well. While that we meant to get a constant depending on k. So in particular, um, when we set t equal to zero, this sort of settled the strong conjecture type of result for the rank of uh, Bernoulli matrices in this regime. And if you take k equal to one, so that recovers the singularity in this region. So it's filling the gap here. Okay, and so, okay, and then, so now I will uh, discuss the, uh, the structure of the proof. So, so the proof is essentially uh, based on the framework of uh, Livak and Timirov. And also, at some part, we use uh, the idea from uh, Basak Rudolfson, since they handle the case when P is very close to uh, log n of n. Maybe let's start with uh, what we're fighting against. So if we let uh, ORCK be the event of A that either K rows or K columns of A are zero, then the probability of that is uh, one over p to the n times n to the rise to the power k, the forcing rise to the power k. And this is roughly exponential of k of uh, log n minus uh, pn when uh, p, I guess, should be little o of one over s squared n. You can simplify in this way. So whatever we try to estimate, we need to have uh, these uh, terms in mind. So what means a high probability event should be really comparing to uh, the magnitude of this one. So we will say uh, event of uh, this matrix is a K high probability event if the complement is uh, of little o of this we had here. 
Uh, so since we're discussing the rank, so first step uh, is actually that we try to re do reduction. So to estimate uh, the singular values of A, S, N minus K plus one, actually uh, just by the min max property of, uh, or maximum property here we want, uh, of singular value, you can uh, relate it to uh, its sub matrix. So it's uh, A with uh, rows I and columns J. Here we are restricting the uh, size of I and J to be exactly n minus k plus one. So the singular values of A is bounded uh, above, bounded below by the max of uh, uh, the sub matrices of AIJ, where uh, the size is n minus k plus one and n minus k plus one. In particular, uh, this is the least singular value. of uh, AIJ. And so the first step is we try to reduce to the question about a, not the least singular value to the least singular values. But uh, of course, uh, we cannot just do this uh, directly try to estimate AIJ itself because if we want to capture the right probability, uh, that wouldn't work. So the point is we want to find a, a suitable event, omega one. I'll explain later what it should be, but uh, for now, just the idea that uh, it means we want to have a precise uh, pair I zero and J zero. So that uh, A I zero, J zero does not have a zero columns, zero rows. Of course, this is the condition for the singular value not to be the uh, least singular value not to be zero, but also uh, it should not have linear dependence of uh, among uh, few columns or rows. And then we estimate it in this way uh, by uh, overlapping with the event this omega one. So we have it equal to omega one of its complement and also the conditional probability here. And of course here we should have, uh, this should be where probability of omega one complement should be less equal to one plus zero one of a probability of uh, omega RC. Sort of uh, omega one should definitely include the the event that uh, some of the we can avoid uh, the zero columns and zero rows. That, that's why we have uh, the term here. But I will explain uh, in a few seconds what maybe in a one or two minutes what omega one is. So this is just like the top level, the outline of this to reduction to a least singular value problem. And now uh, maybe just one more set sentence to show S and K plus one of uh, A I zero J zero is uh, uh, equal to zero. This means that uh, X is X of course not equal to zero such that uh, AI zero, J zero, X equals zero. Okay. And that's what we're trying to do. So to do that, we will have to run into a uh, decomposition of the Euclidean space. So I think this becomes like uh, the standard strategy of uh, try to handling a uh, singularity of random matrices. You will decompose into uh, vectors that are say typical vectors, they are not sparse, and then vectors that are sparse. And we're using the decomposition of, uh, from the work of Libat and Tip Miro. Uh, so I should roughly explain what the uh, decomposition 
So, uh, essentially, I, I have to introduce a non increasing rearrangement of a vector x. So, what it really means is uh, not, I try to add a permutation for each vector x in Rn of their index in the sense that uh, now I'm looking at a new vector, say uh, x star i, taking the vector values of x sigma xi. And uh, so that I'm having the sigma x, the permutation, and to satisfy that uh, x sigma xi is greater than x sigma xj when i greater to j. Maybe let me just explain it by a picture. Suppose I have the vector uh, negative two, three, one. This is my x in R3. Then the non-decreasing rearrangement, what I get is uh, just this uh, three, two, one. So not increasing a real engine. And now I'll talk about the decomposition. So we have first one is uh, uh, V vectors. They are usually represent uh, typical vectors on Rn. So how it looks like is like this. Uh, so I'll normalize. So these vectors are not sparse at all. In particular, uh, its spot is of order n. So lambda is some parameter. If we normalize uh, x so that uh, x star of lambda n equals to one, then v vectors are those uh, those vectors so that uh, this should be definitely be increasing function. These vectors are those vectors so that uh, the growth of uh, the, uh, the magnitude of the vector is not so fast as it tends to the, the one with uh, every, this in, every infinity norm. So, it's roughly stable, this kind of vector are roughly stable in terms of uh, the growth from here to the first values. In particular, it represents the uh, uh, typical vectors in Rn, non sparse and sort of uh, in, in the sense of the majority of vectors in Rn. Uh, then the second type is uh, sort of the complement of those. It's those kind of vectors so that you see that there is a huge gap in terms of uh, the magnitude of the uh, vectors. So it's sort of large at some points, and then after a certain point, it decays so fast. So there's a huge gap here. So unlike uh, this one, where it looks like it's something looks like this, and then somehow there's a large gap here. In particular, this kind of uh, vector also covers all the uh, sparse vectors. For instance, you can think uh, vectors are of this form, which are constant here, and then becomes zero after that. So this uh, is includes all the sparse vectors of uh, all sorts of magnitude. So here is uh, n1 and n2. So, so I should have didn't mention the parameter. So n1 is less than n2, and this is less than n. Somehow you have a gap, you have a jump between the magnitude of uh, x star. And so there's an, also another type of vectors, but I would not introduce it. Maybe just one sentence. It's called R vectors for those of you know uh, the framework on working with uh, singularity of uh, random matrices. If 
is the collection of those vectors where you can apply the take a result of Raposin's lemma plus a net argument to dealing with a estimate of AX. And we will have the Euclidean space is the union of uh, these uh, three types of vectors. So this is the composition. One is a typical one, and the other is like uh, those are uh, class. And so let's go back to what is omega one. So a partial result of uh, Lipov Timirov is showing that okay, uh, if I condition on every vector in uh, not in this uh, v, not a v vector, so. And in particular, those are R vector or T vectors. If I condition on the fact that uh, the A transpose of X is greater than zero, then the probability of the existing uh, V, X in V such that AX is zero, it's small. Um, and actually with some modification of their work, we can actually make this more to get actually the desired uh, quantity we want. We can make it to be little o of t of omega r to k we want. So really we want to apply uh, this result not to a, but on the sub matrix uh, a i zero j zero. So, and in this in particular tells us what we want on omega one. We want omega one is the event that there exists i zero j zero so that this matrix satisfy the property that uh, both uh, a i zero j zero x is greater than zero, and at the same time a transpose i zero j zero of x is greater than zero for every x not in uh, for every non v vectors sort of thing. So this is the rough idea. So now. This is the main part to prove once we get this done. And okay, I have 12 minutes. And to handle to handle this, so our focus is really on the T vectors. Uh, to handle the collection of T vector is uh, the goal is to show uh, uh, how to show. Ax is not zero for uh, x lies in t. We know that, let me again draw this picture. That, uh, if I pick x in t, then x star looks like this. And this is n1. And say so here is n2. Uh, suppose we can find a row in A so that uh, the row of A is zero among all of the entries here, but except one of them is one. Say so there is some J zero, which is one here. And then I, I sort of don't worry about what happens later. Then I know that AX of I is really this uh, AI of J0 of X star of, uh, so X star of uh, J0 and then subtracting the summation of the rest, say J lies, not lies in sigma X of uh, N2 of uh, AIJXJ. And essentially this is, I should have it, I applied a triangle inequality here. So essentially this is the dominating term due to the fact that uh, this vector has a jump and this part is negligible. But uh, what is the difficulty on handling uh, 
So this is the idea how we can show this uh, AX is not zero. But what's the difficulty here is uh, the probability estimate uh, gets bad when uh, P gets close to uh, the threshold log n over n. And at the same time, uh, uh, n1 and n2 are very small. They, uh, it can be, say, like uh, of constant orders. And actually, um, in the work of uh, Basak Rudolfsson, they also have this, uh, face these kind of difficulties. And I, they resolve it uh, basically in, in the sense that uh, by, uh, how it, by expansion property, a key ob observation from them is that uh, the existence of uh, such a role is highly depending on the support size of the columns. For those columns uh, lies in uh, sigma x of n2. So it sort of depends on how do I draw this? Uh, the support size of these columns. I'll explain with a simple example why this is the case. So suppose, uh, let's just say n1 is equal to two and uh, sigma x of n1 is just one and two. And then let's see the probability of uh, existing uh, existing uh, i such that uh, a i1 a i2 equals uh, one zero or zero one is really the probability that uh, the support of a uh, first column and the second column does not match right uh, sort of, uh, I'm assuming these two rows are not uh, zero rows. So these two columns are not zero columns. Now let's see, what is the probability that uh, the support of two matches when say uh, both of their support size Uh, PN, so this is like uh, the typical size of the support of uh, the rows. Then since we are freezing the uh, size of the support, so this is just really two random subset of the same size, what is the chance that they are matching? So the probability is really just one over N choose PN. And when the support gets very small, Again, let me just pick the extreme case. When both of them are just one, then this is just one over n. So from here, there is a significant loss in terms of the probability. So really, if we want to handle such a case, uh, it's really important to, to separate these uh, columns with small size out and then do the analysis. And so our way to handle these uh, key vectors is just based on these ideas. And now what we do is, okay, we will look at, uh, look at the quantity or this collection of uh, columns so that uh, the support size is less equal to T. And what we do is conditioning on the support size of all columns. Uh, and then with the typical values of uh, size of uh, LT or for different values of T, so to speak. So in some sense, we condition on a, a typical situation of the support size of all columns. And then we do the analysis from the uh, remaining columns, so remaining randomness. So means that each column now is uh, uh, 
a random subset of fixed size. And what we'll do is uh, we sort of to decompose a uh, We will also fix some t0 greater than zero, and we want to decompose a into the following form, where at some part is corresponding to those zero cores. So this is uh, l zero, and then this is l t equal to j one, and. Also, I have I1. I1 is the collections of, uh, is the union of supports of vectors in, uh, of columns in uh, LT. So I decompose into the matrix that looks like this. Sorry, I'm not drawing, it looks like a square matrix. It is so to speak, uh, we will decompose the matrix like this, and then try to analyze to find our, uh, remember our goal is to find our I, AI0, zero, A0 zero here. And maybe I'll wrap up with uh, um, how do we deal with when uh, P is very close to log N over N, or is slightly bigger than that. So uh, when P is uh, between log N over N to like one plus one over two K of log N over N. So it's a small window where that sort of is close to the situation of uh, Basak Rudolson that they did. Uh, remember that we are always try to fight against uh, against this probability, right? So all the event we talk about must be uh, one minus low O of this event. So if you look at this case, what happened is for every constant T, it's, it's possible that your LT has size which is polylog in N. It's polylog in N just to win uh, this probability. And in that sense, it's, this is relatively large. But um, what we can do is uh, we can win with the columns corresponding to LT uh, linear independence. So how say again then with this whole example uh, where so suppose I know that uh, C I C one of A support just the one we had before, support of ci of a is equal to one for i equal to one, two. The probability that uh, ci of a equal to c, c1 of a equal to c2 of a condition on this. We said before that this is one over n. And this probability is actually very small in the sense that uh, when p is uh, uh, when p is close to log n over n, say uh, in particular specific, specifically this range, what they mean is uh, probability of omega rc of k actually tends to a constant. as uh, p goes to log n over n. So at some range, uh, at some point, this probability becomes actually very small comparing to this one. So while we are unable to control uh, the size of LT or the size of uh, columns with small support, but it turns out that uh, these columns, they are uh, sort of a linear, independence in that sense. And somehow we can win in this case. And so to speak that uh, when we pick uh, AI zero, J zero, we would actually include uh, 
include uh, the whole matrix, uh, submatrix H when P is small. Maybe can I have one more minute? Uh, and when P is large, now uh, what we conclude was no longer true because uh, this probability now is become an extremely large event compared to omega of uh, is large comparing to probability of omega rck because this one gets extremely small. But how can we win is now somehow we can win in terms of uh, the control of the size of uh, columns with small support actually to a very precise level that uh, we can choose some uh, reasonable uh, value t so that we can uh, have uh, uh, the size of LT to be uh, just less equal to beta plus one. It cannot be beta because that cannot beat the uh, K columns, K zero columns, but we can beat it at the level F of beta plus, plus one. So what it means is in this matrix decomposition, H W D here, this one has many uh, linear uh, dependence. We, we cannot avoid that since we know if K is large, but sort of they are just a set of size beta plus one. So when we choose our AI zero, J zero, we can just have uh, using one column from there so that we can avoid all the possible linear uh, dependence there to construct our AI zero, J zero. Okay, sorry, I, I should stop here. Thank you.